Welcome back. It's a big week for markets with CPI, PPI, and consumer sentiment data all ahead. But one of my next guests says the Fed won't care about the data, and the other says you shouldn't care either. So what does matter for investors here? Joining me now is David Bonson, Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer. All right, David, are you just gonna, what, what are you following then? Football, what, what matters for investors? Well, unfortunately, football doesn't matter for investors, but it certainly mattered last night for this Cowboy fan. But um, oh, in no. terms of what, what the Fed will do, I think that the Fed is following markets. Markets are not following the Fed. And I think it is a fait accompli that they're going to pause again at the end of September. Futures are still indicating a sort of a jump ball around the November meeting. The odds are a little weighted towards, again, no new movement but at this point, the CPI issues are very, very clear. Oil prices may very well bring headline levels higher. But the shelter housing number that has been so distorted, yeah. so lagged and so wrong for so long, that's coming down and the Fed knows it. Sure. And obviously, rents are going to come down even more given the supply coming online. What would you say, David, are the most important kind of data points now to follow? Well, one of them I don't want to be cynical about, but I think it needs to be mentioned. It's the fact that we're going into an election year. Mm -hmm. And I just don't believe that the Fed wants to be raising rates going in the election year. <clears throat> and that's not, and Kelly, that's not a partisan comment. Right. It could be either party in office. It's just simply that it can be perceived as, as putting a thumb on the scale into the national politic. They didn't touch rates all of 2016 when their dot plot said they were going to raise rates four times. Hmm. And so you go back to 94 and the heat that Greenspan took in those midterms when they were raising rates in the middle of that first Bill Clinton term, they've mostly stayed out of the politics since. And I think hiking rates when they're already at 550 basis points going into election year, it's just very unlikely. So let me kind of translate this also to, you know, David, obviously you follow bonds more. I'm sorry, Brian, bond more. David, you're more of a stocks guy. And when I, I looked at your list and, and the, your, the fact that you're looking at Kenview jumped out to me because Kenview, OK, one of the newest, you know, most esoteric stocks, owner of Tylenol, you know, the spinoff, obviously, broke below its IPO price and has been getting a lot of attention ahead of the big IPO week that we're having. Why do you think this is an area for opportunity? Well, again, we already owned it. I mean, it just didn't exist because we owned a Johnson & Johnson, and it was a third of the Johnson & Johnson balance sheet was this consumer products division. And so now we have a separated entity that has a lower multiple, a higher dividend yield, and like you mentioned, Tylenol, Band-Aid, shampoo, all of these wonderful consumer products uh, that we believe in, and we believe it's at a, a multiple opportunity that will do well. It sold off last week because a lot of people got Kenview at a 7% discount hmm. in the spinoff that J&J did. So they were taking advantage of that free money. Now we think it sort of reprices, resets, and we think Kenview is a long-term hold. All right. And of course, it fits more in with where you are in the market. A little worried still about some of the valuations, high tech, that kind of thing. David Bonson, thank you very much for your time today and your thoughts on the markets.